Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 384. Uh, each week uh, we gather here to uh, um, review and uh, contribute to the, the questions that were asked and answered on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight, uh, Micah fisher Kirshner. Uh, Micah is uh, in, in the SEO, SEO world on the east coast of the USA. He's the director of uh, uh, SEO and content at Turn River Capital. He's founder and president uh, of the Bay Area Search.org, uh, an SEO meetup group, former head of SEO at Zendesk and former senior SEO manager at Zazzle. I could go on, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> David, David Razam is uh, um, a leading internet marketer based um, in the sunny south of the UK. Um, it's not sunny? It's not remotely sunny. It is uh, grey. And it is, it is, it is grey. Okay. <laughs> it's David's right. personality that's davidrozam.com yeah. and um, he's based in Sussex uh, on the south side of the UK. Uh, Masataki Wasser is based in London at Wimbledon. Um, he, uh, when he's not playing tennis, uh, he runs a website, wasserweb.net, W-A-S-A-W-E-B.net. And um, Masataki is also a Google product expert on the AdWords, sorry, AdSense uh, community. And Tim Kapper. Tim is uh, uh, web, sorry, webmaster of uh, onlineownership.com. Uh, he's a, a leading uh, SEO based in the UK, about 100 miles north of London. And uh, he uh, can be found at, yeah, onlineownership.com. All right, let's have a look at our first uh, question tonight. It's uh, titled uh, Tracking Keyword Ranking. Um, it's from Simon Quinn. Um, look, I'm not going to read it out. Um, it, it looks like a bit much for me. Um, oh, I'll, I'll try. You guys just interrupt me anytime you're ready. You, you uh, can do it. You can do it, Jim. Go oh, on. I can. I just don't want to bore you. I, didn't, I, didn't, I, I would have put this one uh, second or third. Uh, anyway, uh, Simon said, I have created an article with the intent of ranking for a keyword. Here's a novel thought. Um, is it possible to check where on Google this article is ranking without manually searching and checking? For example, I wrote an article on best phone repair and I want to check where that article ranks for best phone repair. I'm tracking the uh, ranking for best phone repair, but the homepage is ranking for that keyword right now. Um, I want to see where the article is ranking and is it going up or down? Thanks. Simon said thanks. What, what do you guys have to say? So he's looking for the second page or the uh, second page that's ringing for the <clears throat> for the page so it's not the main one which is his home page but the second so um and there's tons of tools that can do this google search console for free um you just check it the landing page section and keep track of that um many of the ranking tools the cmrush included you can you can look by landing page and see what what keywords it ranks for uh, many of them will have secondary pages that show up as well if you're tracking the specific the keyword in the in the tool. Um, so they're 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 all there. Um, that yeah, you can just use that so you don't have to go and manually always look at it yourself. Let others do the the tracking and scraping for you. Yeah, um, all of those. Uh, I just. Um, wanted to comment on why the uh why the uh the page you've written to to rank for best uh, best phone repair 
uh, may not be um, may not be ranking. Um, you've got to write some better content to be to be blunt. Um, generally, um, Google tends to tends to attach most of the searches that uh, that that are um, related to a site to the home page until you get your your chops um, working properly um, so if you're seeing that your uh, best phone phone repair page is ranking below your home page revisit it put some better content on it it being the best phone repair page not the uh, the home page um, it's uh, the situation is telling you that your your best phone repair, phone repair page ain't good enough, to be blunt. Thank you, David. Thank you, Micah. All right. Um, any more before we move on? Okay. Let's... Um... This one from Maravik Munoz, uh, it's uh, titled Making Sure That The Site Can Get The Best Ranking Possible. Um, Maravik uh, said, hi, I'm new to this whole SEO thing and I was Googling which are the best practices to have. Um, one thing that came up is having an agile SEO process. This will allow to audit, fix and then monitor a site uh, every day, making sure that the site can get the best ranking possible. I'm thinking about creating my own version of this, but would need to know if there's potential before I fully commit. Uh, is this uh, a good uh, starting base? Um, yeah, that, that's it. Well, yes, um, on one level, it's good. Um, audit, fix and monitor. Um, do something to your site, um, see if it works. If it doesn't, do something else to it. See if it does work. Go around and around and around. That's, that's the process that we all do. Uh, what concerns me is do it every day, I think it says here. Um, yes, every day. Um, I don't like checking sites every day. Things happen. They go up and down for all sorts of weird, weird reasons. Um, check it once a week, once a month or something, depending on the size or how far out of kilter the site is. Um, if it's a, a site that's big and needs lots of work on it, then perhaps uh, do your audit fix and monitor on a, a chunk of it every few days. Look at what you've got to do, but don't spend all your time on process you you need to be actually executing um with with this do do the work work out what the work is do it leave it for a while check it if it's not worked then or not worked as you want it to then go back and do some more to it thank you david yeah yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna see results like if you update a page, <coughs> um, it, uh, and especially if it's like sort of some some kind of uh, internal page or whatever deep page in the site. You're not gonna see changes to that. Google needs to find it and see the changes and update accordingly. You're not gonna see instantly things. So you know, once you update that, it might be a month before you even you know come back to that. Uh, one thing I do is. Um, you know, if I'm working through a, a site, uh, you know, for a new client, that's a big site. Um, you obviously can't get to the entire thing. You know, it might be a couple of months worth of a process. But then you start, you know, uh, one handy way is uh, keep an eye on um, Search Console. Um, I like to look in the, the, the overview um, and see how things have improved or, or you know, for particular search queries. Um, and then you can also start looking back and what I do, especially on a, on a site I've inherited, um, you go back and you can then actually, depending on Search Console, you know, looking at positions, et cetera, and then you can look at the actual old bit of content 
and you can like actually I can refine that slightly. It's a good piece, but I can refi refine that ref you know refine it um, to actually target a featured snippet if I just you know reword the actual first paragraph to make it to make it you know feature snippet applicable or um, if I add in uh, a bullet point, you know, list into the actual, because let's say it was an FAQ or something, uh, or it had a process, can you rework it for a featured snippet for, um, you know, with, with, with um, as, as a list featured snippet? So, you know, that, that's one handy thing also to look at, but just know, well, you know, these things, changes you make won't happen overnight you would normally see the changes over a sort of let's say a month a 30-day period and then you can reassess and think ah i need to fine tune that or i can fine tune that page to better target this query um so it's not going to be like on a daily thing you know you need to make changes and then assess those changes thank you tim all right so we right to move on we'll declare that a wrap for Marovic. Um, let's go to number three. I think we've got nine questions today. Um, Mohammed Arnaz uh, said, I am demotivated now because I am not getting traffic. Um, Mohammed went on to write, uh, he said, I had written about 40 articles on my website about affiliate marketing, uh, brackets about domain and hosting. Um, since February 2020, but I'm demotiv demotivated now because I'm not getting much traffic and AdSense is also not approving. Uh, kindly guide me to what I should do now. Well, it's a, um, it's a heck of a, uh, a tough niche you've decided to um, attack there. Um, there's one or two bits of content around the internet about affiliate marketing, um, particularly about domain and uh, website hosting. You know, it's it's bound to be tough. Um, so if you're really keen on doing that, you're going to have to grind away and produce much more content and it's going to have to be, you're going to be absolutely sure that it is better than the other stuff that's out there. Um, there are some big monsters out there who uh, you'll be up against, some big beasts out there um, that you'll be up against. So um, I think perhaps you started this um without actually realizing the, the magnitude of the task you are setting yourself. And it's hardly surprising that you're, you're feeling demotivated. Um, how you go about this, um, you, in order to get rid of your demotivation, I suspect you're looking for some, um, for some quick wins. And I'm not sure where the quick wins are. Um, unless you can find a very sub 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 niche here uh, that 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 uh, that the competition is much lower for um, but doing affiliate marketing for domain and hosting is you know everyone does that e everyone who has a website has got a uh, well not quite but a lot of people who have a website have a little banner on their site saying oh i'm using xy host you know it's such a place um, you know, you're up against all of those. Um, and I think that you've either got to re resign yourself to a lot of work and a long haul, or you've got to refocus what you're doing. Um, I'm not sure what to say about AdSense. I'm not an expert on AdSense, but I know a man who is. Ah, <laughs> no, I... I totally agree with what David said. It's a really tough area to go into. As a genre, it's frankly oversaturated. A lot of people write about these topics and AdSense can be quite picky 
in these areas. Um, AdSense does want to see a high degree of originality in terms of the content, and that is best done through good and useful content. And in instances like this, I think you have to be specialized. So you have to be able to say, OK, if you're going to host this kind of website, then do this and that, or choose this and that hosting, for example. So you cannot have a generic sort of content that could be found everywhere and anywhere. I think that that's the problem with this kind of area. So <clears throat> how could I put it? I do think that you need to have some amount of organic traffic to be approved for AdSense. And even if you do get traffic from Google and other search engines, that doesn't necessarily translate into AdSense approval. And I think it is pretty difficult in this particular area because, as David said, it's saturated. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mr. Taki. Thank you, uh, David. I, I'd like to add that um, the, um, the e-commerce is, is not just about um, um, having a page that ranks well uh, on Google or Bing. Um, e-commerce is, you can, be um, very good at that, but without um, somebody at the, uh, um, the, 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 the back end, um, where the, have they got the product in stock? Do they, can, do they supply? Do they follow up? Do they look after uh, um, each client as they go and, and treat them so well that they're going to be moved to write a, uh, an excellent review one day. Um, there's just so many uh, factors that um, um, rather than build the website and um, look around for people to join your website, <clears throat> maybe look around for some people who actually want to sell something online and um, start building a site which fulfills their needs. That might be easier, might be something novel and might be, might be better. Um, yes, um, I don't know, AdSense on, on, on your website, I'd take that off for a while because it's only slowing your site down and, and until uh, you get some traffic, there's not much point having AdSense there at all. I'm sure Mr. Taki would agree with that. Um, I hope so anyway. Um, yeah. Or, no, I agree because, I mean, uh, as the site is currently set up, it's set up for affiliate marketing, right? Essentially, there are quite a few articles about different hosting options and different themes for e-commerce websites and so on and so forth. It probably makes sense to have affiliate marketing um, and you know get a cut from uh, people signing up to host, um, hosting plans rather than AdSense in this instance. I mean, for AdSense, you need traffic. In in the end, AdSense can only be um, sustainable if you have a lot of traffic. And if you don't have a lot of traffic, then AdSense isn't necessarily the, the best option in terms of monetizing your content. Yeah. All right. Is there any more for this one? Thank you, Tim. Thank you, David. Thank you, Micah. Thank you, Masataki. Let's go to the next on our run list. This one from Andy Trigg on creating category structure. Uh, Andy said, hi, I'm struggling to work out a sensible category structure 
a strategy, I should say, for my WordPress site. I'm writing about white goods appliances, washing machines, dishwashers, tumble dryers, etc. For each one of these appliances, I write about all aspects, including DIY help, uh, advice, uh, reviews, where to buy new ones, and where to get spare parts, and so on. Surely we, we is, have a, is there a question a, to it? No, the, the, the question is, uh, um, can you help me work out a sensible category strategy for WordPress? Um, I think um, Michael Martin has, um, as, as always, uh, jumped in and uh, um, gave um, a great answer. Um, uh, again, on a WordPress site, in my opinion, you should avoid using subcategories. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other thing, of course, WordPress wasn't ever designed to be a, um, a e-commerce platform. Yeah. Um, yeah, Michael's, he's, I'd say in this case, pretty on point. Um, I'm usually of the view <clears throat> not to overdo categories and tags. Um, I don't really think of using subcategories very often for for blogs. Um, I I kind of view it as keep it succinct with the number of tags and categories you use. Make sure they're very much on point to the uh, what people are looking for, uh, the topics they're in. Um, and I find that usually to be the best way to build out kind of what that category structure is going to be. Outside of that, uh, I mean, it, it kind of requires a bit of research into the industry to know what, what are going to be the right ones uh, to, to build out uh, without kind of the additional research into those areas. Um, you know, as it makes sense for a, a whole structure around DIY type topics. Um, and then, you know, how massive of a site we're going to get to can also dictate how many tags in turn. But generally, keep both succinct. Don't go overboard. Um, don't use, you know, no index type pages. It's, it's not going to be helpful for you um, type of thing. And so it's kind of generic at the high level. Um, but at least I like, think what Michael has here generally makes sense. Thank you, Micah. Anybody else? All right, well, uh, um, let's move on to number five on our run list from Rate Arup. Um, it's titled Measuring the Impact of SEO Initiatives. Um, Rate said, what is your experience with measuring the impact of SEO initiatives? Is this a question to about how how to measure the effect of SEO measures uh, on a website? Uh, in which case, you should benchmark, then implement the initiatives, and then come back a bit later and measure them, um, which is a bit like our um, question one, wasn't it, when we were talking about this? Uh, it's a question two. Anyway, earlier uh, this time. Um, or is this a question about which tools you should use? Or is it a question about how do you set KPIs in order to measure the impact of SEO initiatives? Um, I'm not sure. Um, Yes, um, it could be any of those, um, and I could give a half-hour presentation on any or all of them. 
Um, I don't know if anyone has got a, a better idea of what the answer is. Okay, well, um, I, I'd suggest to, to rate that um, uh, he should begin and, and uh, as the questions arise, uh, ask those specific questions. Uh, I think the, the, the question is so big, uh, it, it, uh, um, it, it, it ignores the, the fact that this, yeah, the entire business of SEO is, is about uh, measuring the impact. Otherwise, how would you justify what you're doing to your client? Okay, let's move on to number six on our run list uh, from Arsen uh, Sohail. Um, what things to check while hiring an SEO content writer? Arsene said, I'm hiring an SEO content writer for writing articles and blogs. What things should I check after he delivers the content? Um, will, will I check grammar and plagiarism? Um, and what else um, do you guys w recommend that I check? Um, and is the, the tool um, www.duplichecker.com reliable for checking plagiarism and grammar? On blogs, I will target uh, my uh, primary and secondary keywords. Uh, I've read somewhere that the density of primary keywords, oh God, really? We have to put up with yeah, that. yeah, yeah. No, fuck. <laughs> Mm. Okay, so um, Asan, I'm I'm gonna just uh, I'll jump in before the actual the main copywriter comes in here. <coughs> um, look, mate, you, you shouldn't be hiring an SEO content writer. That's just bottom line. You shouldn't be writing an SEO content writer unless the topic is about SEO. You should be hiring a writer, copywriter, that is familiar with the topic or subject that uh you, you know you you you're, that where this content is going to be so um and depending on it you know so, like some copywriters specialize in specific fields um and depending on like the type of actual material you're looking for um if it's very generic based you know i don't know um the, then then you know a good copywriter could could turn his hand to that also you shouldn't be looking at an seo content writer you should be looking at a copywriter for a particular topic genre whatever right after that um you know because it's it's well written in the first instance you're going to nat naturally have things in there you can say yes look this is the, the feature of it and this is you know primarily that i would like to try and include but of course this is the big problem seos looking at a bit of content can generally cock it completely up because they focus on shoving something in there that at the end of the day the piece of content doesn't make anybody sense anymore right so you should be writing for the users right you should be focusing that you should be coming up with, you should be looking at your site going, or at a client site or whatever going, okay, these are the areas that I'm missing and these are the areas I need to fill in. Right, now I decide on how I want to um, create my supporting content and because I want this to target this, this to target this. So then you go to, then you find a copywriter with your ideas and go, right, these are my pieces, da 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 and then they can also help you from a professional standpoint put that all together in, 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 in into into you know stuff so get seo content writer out the way right and if you're hiring a professional you're not going to need to bloody check it with you know plagiarism and that you know um because you're hiring a professional they're not going to copy someone else's work um so yeah, I need to think. You, you know, you need to rethink this and understand understand like the, the the essentials of that. And then now we'll hand you over to David, who will um, explain the the ins and outs 
of actual content writing. <laughs> oh, th thank you for the, for the lead in there, Tim. Um, I, I, in, in many ways, you've you covered it. Um, Actually, wouldn't that be segue? Oh, segue! Yeah, yeah, jolly dear. I wish I, I wish I was a segue. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a good content writer would know that one. <laughs> oh, are you saying something about my competence with, uh, with content here? <laughs> anyway, I'll send. Um, yeah, you shouldn't be checking your co content writer's grammar. Um, depends on how much you trust them as to uh, whether you... Uh, uh, ch uh, check them for plagiarism. However, if your content really is um, written for your site and your business, it's unlikely to be plagiarized. Um, so, um, articles and blogs about your business, um, you'd have to be some kind of cowboy to to put plagiarized content onto uh, a business's website, in my opinion. Um, and the idea of this mechanistic view of, uh, of content, of copywriting, indeed of SEO, we, we get this as a hangover from the dark, the deep dark days of, of the web when somehow everything had these strange numbers attached to it and the idea that we we could build links and all those other things that pop up week after week. So this is this is not meant to be a criticism criticism of you, Arsene, but the the idea that you should go about and have primary keywords at a particular density and secondary keywords at a different density and you should have as I think I noticed in uh, Yoast uh, the other day, were insisting that I put the the keyword at the start of the title. What kind of utter bollocks is that? You know, we're trying to get a we're trying to get a, a more naturalistic view of of the web. Uh, we're trying to make it something like you or I would read and enjoy. Um, and there's the whole, the whole point of quality, uh, and and what going going back to what Tim said, um, the, the the idea is you start you start with a piece of copy. You you've got two two sides of a piece of copy. I think it's what you as a client, you as a business owner, you as a website owner um, want to say, but there's also an awareness of what people want to find out about. Um, so you need, as a writer, you need to know what the what the two sides are, are how the two sides are approaching this this one web page. Um, you also need to know how the the web page fits within other web pages, the, the structure of the site, um, what the uh, ha how uh, how granular your your topics are, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, again, I'm not. I'm not going to give you a, a day's um, SEO copywriting uh, training here um, and a day's not enough. But you need, you need to write, you need to find someone who will write, uh, write content, write with the target audience in mind, write with an awareness of search intent, write with an uh, awareness of what kind of topics and subtopics will act as a framework for your piece? Uh, what things, what things uh, match, or at least go some way to matching with people's needs? Um, as I say, I, I notice while I'm talking that Christine Hansen talks about great CTAs and variation of flow and writing style. Yes, all of those. Um, it's a it's a writer first, uh, a writer who, on top of great writing chops, has SEO awareness and can do. If you're not doing it, the the writer needs to be able to research the the the, the key phrases and the searches that you're uh, that you're. I hate to say targeting, 
uh, that you're writing content to, uh, to attract people uh, to. Um, it's a big thing, but don't get caught up on the uh, on measuring uh, keyword density. Um, that is the way to bad copy. Um, and I have no idea about jupyterchecker.com. Um, no, uh, there, there are lots of um, lots of plagiarism checkers, uh, duplicate duplicate checking checkers, both paid and free out there but if you're right if you're having written proper content for your site plagiarism should shouldn't be an issue all of this all of yeah, this means yeah. that a good writer doesn't come cheap um so you know when someone says i'm hiring a content writer are you actually paying a, you know the proper rent because a piece of good content is not going to come cheap. Yeah, totally understand, totally agree. Yes, and just echoing what David said, if you come across a website which uses keyword and density in the entire site, um you should run you should turn your back on it and run away never get never return um okay right will we move on to the next excellent number seven on our run list is from Ed edamame tage um and it's titled competing with bigger players we've had some interesting questions tonight i think um, Ida Mame said, hello everyone. I'm wondering if I could get some thoughts on a challenge we face with organic traffic. We're a, a fashion and interior multi-brand and a lot of our brands are small and do not have great search volume. Another challenge is that larger retailers who stock the same brands will have a high search rank. Uh, thinking about uh, the business as a whole or within specific brands, um, examples include uh, um, Stasi and Minor Perhonen. Goodness, I've never heard of those. Um, how would you work around these limitations? All thoughts and suggestions most welcomed. Yeah, we have had this before and I answered it before, but I'll answer it again very quickly this time. Um, so look it's the same it's the same thing that all um you know a, a lot of e-commerce sites and affiliate sites out there face uh same products it's literally you know stocked and sold by freaking every tom dick and harry the only way you're going to do you know, the only way you're going to manage to do this um is to to adapt where the larger brands can't uh, well, they, they could if they wanted to, but they literally don't have the time. So I would start trying to create different variations of, of the actual product. So where they will just go long sleeve brand name T-shirt, you don't want to be targeting long sleeve brand name T-shirt. You want to be, you know, uh, looking at combinations of brand name, brand name, T-shirt and shorts, brand name, uh, two pack t-shirts and shorts brand name, you know, creating combinations that other people will still search for. Yes, there will be lower volumes, but you can then target them with, with, with these different kind of things. Right. Um, because everyone will just search t-shirt brand name blah, blah, and everyone's optimized for t-shirt brand name, blah, blah. but you are now working on all the other potential different search queries for these things. So that's I one missed, way of doing it. I missed the pink and fluffy elephant. So I, I, it was easier to follow for me. <laughs> <sighs> okay. So 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 that's that that's the first one. The second one that you can do is maybe go down the road of creating a resource for that brand, right? You stock the brand, but you go start creating a resource. And I would probably start in the city you're located in. 
but I'm kind of guessing that you're not actually, that doesn't really matter because you are uh, probably just e-com. Um, you don't have a physical store. Um, but you could go down the road of creating a resource for that brand. Um, well, I mean, you could start in the city you're in and actually create a, a resource on every single freaking store around that stocks that. Yeah, physical store. Then you could do one for online in the, in the, in the physical area, like a mega resource. So like literally anyone in the area searches brand name, location, boom, there's your site. Yes, you are listing competitors where they can get it, but you've already made that leap of hitting them, getting them on your site when they search in location and brand. Boom, you're on there. You just need to make sure that your call to actions are actually like, hey, dudes, we actually sell it. We can ship it faster, cheaper, um, and at the same kind of price than you're going to get from these big boys, um, and we are right here in your city. So, you know, you need to start thinking, you know, you need to start switching up your game if you're going to compete. But it's damn, it is possible, man. You just need to switch it up and you need to start thinking about the users, what they're searching and stop concentrating on what the big boys are doing and, 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 and you know, plow your own way through this field. Excellent, Tim. Uh, anything more, guys, before we move on to the next? Okay, let's have a look at this uh, number eight on our run list. Faraz Ahmed, do these pages need optimization? Is the title. Um, and Faraz said, should we need to target keywords, brackets, right on meta and title tags of these pages? Um, also, like about us, um, contact us, clients career terms and conditions um go ahead guys. yeah i mean in most situations you probably not but um you know if you've got a brand and you've got a large enough search volume you probably should make sure you're, you're writing them properly um if somebody's looking f you know to contact your brand with whether it's a phone number or an email, you want to make sure that that's available to, uh, to them and you're not letting others um, define what that is for you and give it the wrong number or the wrong email or an outdated one. So there are definitely situations where you want to make sure that you do provide, but it's often contingent on if people are searching for it because uh, you, know, you have some kind of branding in place. Yeah, totally. And I mean, like, I know we say, like, do, do these page needs up, uh, uh, you know, up, optimizing. But, you know, you search for anything and go telephone number four. And, you know, if Google can find it, they will actually show a feature snippet for your phone number. And, like, come on, you know, just like start thinking about this in, in terms of, you know, if somebody wants to contact you, they want to contact you. They don't want to be dragging through freaking one page of search results just to find the right site. Yeah. So, you know, just do it right. Like, don't, you know, you don't need to spend hours on the freaking thing, but just do it right. Get it right. About us. Well, you know, depending on the size of this company or brand, like, you know, you're about us. That should be a, that should be pretty decent. You want, like, if there's a Wikipedia page for these guys and you've got like a knowledge panel show, you want these people using all the information about us, like who the shareholders, stakeholders, I mean, whatever just like you know, just do it properly like forget optimization but you know get the, get the stuff right totally and I, I maybe i'm reading this wrong but uh i don't think so uh should we need to target keywords on meta and title tags of these pages um i ignored that david because it literally was like just you know freaking really <laughs> well yeah it was going to go on to well to target keywords you write content um so the question is are we going to write some content on these pages certainly about us 
about us is one of the most important parts of your website. If you typically pick up a, um, uh, or pick up, go, go into Google Analytics for, for most sites, one of, the, one of the pages that gets the most traffic is about us. Um, and I think, well, contact us. Mm. Again, it depends what's on it. As, as Tim says, if it's got a telephone number on it, if, if that's the only place you're going to put a telephone number, then make sure it's there, put it there, um, make sure it's obvious, um, put some, uh, uh, put some um, blank, complete blank, um, put some um, structured data around it. That's what I'm looking for. Um, clients, I'm not sure how I would optimize that. So my, my view is that, if I can optimize a, a, a page, I should do. If I, sh if I can't optimize it, or I shouldn't be optimizing it, why should it be there? Because optimization and need for a, for, for a page, it's, it's, well, okay, maybe I'm getting a bit, uh, uh, a bit conceptual here, say, but, you know, uh, Optimization is more than sticking some keywords in meta and title tags. It's about writing content, writing the right content in the right way. Um, and some of these here um, are prime candidates for writing some really good content on. Yeah, well, like the about us, uh, great opportunity for um, deep links in, within your site. Um, okay. Will we move on? I think so. Okay, uh, this one from Danilo Q. Ro Rosales Jr. Um, Danilo said, I have a competitor who is using satellite websites. Um, we have a competitor who is using satellite websites, brackets, different domain address, uh, to link back to their website. I was able to confirm this using Spy on Web. Uh, the websites have the same content and they are definitely getting benefits uh, because their website ranks higher uh, on search engine results pages. Oh, my Lord. You know what? I actually just binned off an accountant this week uh, because he was like, oh, my competitors using subdomains for all like and, and and sites for all their other like four locations and they're all interlink and they're all got the same and 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 that's like the must be the way they're doing it and i'm like like no and and why do you want to go, go and use you know stuff that that you perceiving to use that that just will literally make no sense to an actual user that lands there um yeah like no just if you you know that you can use different things for different locations there's a whole load of different reasons to use different different domain names and 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 microsites and things like that there's a whole lot of reasons but don't look at it in terms of seo Look at it in terms of actual, you know, it doesn't make sense for the user to have its own little mini microsite um, or, or actual full site based on whether it be a brand, whether it be a, another location, but it's got, you know, slightly different things or whatever the case may be. There's a whole load of reasons, but don't just assume that just because this guy's created this, that's the way they're winning. You know, there, 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 there are, are hundreds of other different types of reasons. And, you know, like Newsflash, you, you don't need to build links and spammy things like this to actually win in highly competitive markets. You, you, you just don't. Just, you know, just, just start thinking a little bit more practically. Look at your side and, and stop trying to think, well, what are they doing that's making them, them better than me? You should be like, how can I make me better than them? Yep. Thank you, Tim. Uh, I, I, I loved uh, Larry Spencer's um, answer on the Dumb SEO Questions uh, Facebook group. Uh, 
Larry said, mind your own business. Um, okay, and, and JK Dove said, focus on your own site, your energy is best spent uh, working on what you can work on. Um, and I'd just like to echo what Tim said, you can never know um, what exactly uh, is causing your site to rank. You've, only, you've just got to put all your ducks in a row and hope that that's the right yeah to, yeah to and, and totally and i'll and i'll repeat this again you know there's that famous uh well i don't know because it matt cuts was once asked why is this appearing in mine i've got this better that better but why is that one above mine and matt cuts literally said in a webmaster central he said it would take me a team of engineers over six months to re and re rework the entire thing to figure out why that one's position one and that one's position two like literally even freaking google doesn't know why so you know just concentrate on yours make it better yeah okay well it looks like i think it's that time again yes it is it's thank you for watching time we've done it again uh, each week um um this week yeah, we've answered all of the questions asked on the dumb seo questions uh, facebook group um we'll be back next week uh, to do this all again before we go I, look i must thank uh mike fisher kirshner um david rosam masataki waza um and uh, tim kappa um for your valuable contributions on the website um we thank uh, Michael Martinez, as always, Barbara Michelin, um, and uh, many others like J.K. Dove, uh, who I noticed for the first time this week. But people who uh, uh, answer questions as soon as they are asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group and make our job so much easier um, when we come to review them uh, once a week. All right, um, if I can figure out which button to press, uh, we'll be gone. But uh, anyway, until then, thank you uh, um, very much. Uh, yep, I found the button.